back in the year 2014, people cared. People cared about you. They made products to please you and to make their grandfathers proud. They went to work and they showed up. Here, look at this. Can anybody beat that? It's gonna be a while, huh? And then, in 2017, all that went to hell. Reptilians took over our worth. Sony Clinical Science came out, color science, it was green skin tones. A lot went wrong, and it's just gone downhill hard. Today we look back, a blast from the past. 2014 technology. You versus him. Both accepted in today's society. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So we have an interesting battle today. Black Magic OG versus Canon C100 Mark II. Is it immediately apparent which is which? You got the Black Magic OG with the Leica 25mm 1.4 on your right. Canon C100 Mark II. Canon EF 24mm 1.4 on your left. So it's like the same lens equivalent, but this is what they look like with the tiny sensor crops. That's a Super 16 sensor, 3.02 times crop. One inch sensor is 2.7. So it's even smaller than a one inch sensor. Whereas this is a 1.5, some say 1.53. Nobody really knows. APS-C, Super 35, it's basically a movie. Freaking movie, believable. So I want to go over some of the differences these cameras offer and then we go outside to do a little nature scene with different lenses, a little telephoto compression in our lives. But they're very different beasts at heart, made I think in the same year, don't quote me on that, but 2014, roughly? You know what the funniest thing is? I love my Sony ZV-E1. It's a 12 megapixel cam designed for the ultimate 4K video. Video machine. And it's hilarious. You can't really take photos on it, and I love that. You could, but you can't print them up to Godzilla height. You know what's even funnier than 12 megapixels? The 8 megapixels in the C100, and the 2 megapixels of the Blackmagic OG. Just designed for the ultimate 1080p. So, like, tech. What the hell was that? No, I needed that. I really needed that badly. My angle is so bad. No. I have the worst lighting in the history of YouTube. So the Canon C100, eight megapixel, it's a 4K sensor and it down samples that to 1080p and it only does 1080p, but it's like the sharpest 1080p you ever seen in your life, except the first video I took of it. I don't know, I was out of focus or something. So I'm so sorry that was your first impression of it. I could be in focus, I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't really work. But the Blackmagic OG has a two megapixel sensor. It's only 1080p, but the ultimate 1080p. And it's because the sensor is so small, you would think, oh, that's useless. Super 16, it's not even like a smartphone has a bigger sensor. But the tiniest large pixels you ever seen, there's only two in the VIN there and they're the most dynamic range. And we got 12 bit raw in here versus a strange 8-bit garbage profile, but it's Canon Color Science and it makes up for it. But Blackmagic has their own color science, which might surpass anything we know of. So it's like Canon versus, oh my goodness. Now using these cameras are very different because that is a tiny little cinema cam. You barely need anything, but the battery life is impossible. Like they're so different. This is a giant hefty beast. With a flippy screen, it has dual pixel autofocus. Sometimes it works. It's actually been really reliable. It's just, if you're in this situation, you're too close to the camera. It's like, it has a lot to choose from in this little area. It might pick that chair piece or my ears. It doesn't detect the eye. But sometimes it works. Whereas that, like the back screen is bad. It's fixed. It's like an old e-ink screen or something like it's bad news and it's hard to judge focus but it's raw 12-bit raw cinema dng unbelievable and then once you rig it up with a small rig battery it's like okay we can handle some stuff the canon c100 has internal nds we're using it at two stops right now and there's just all these buttons everywhere there's waveform monitors like 
It's the better camera to use, hands down, as a YouTube scrub if you were for some reason debating these two. What are you even doing here? But I would 100% go with the C100 because you get autofocus and a flippy screen. And then all these buttons, it's fun. Battery life way better. You don't need, like right now we're hooked up to an HDMI. It was tough to see the peaking. Everything looks in focus. Except me now. How's Canon doing back there? Is it chosen above? As above, so below. The Canon has an XLR handle you can put on top. So like you can, I can have this mic directly in. That's hilarious. I no longer have to sync audio. I'm syncing it now just because I like to compact it down. If I actually bring this thing out, it's so big. So I've taken off the handle and the grip. So both things gone. And now it's somewhat reasonable, not really at all. But the reason you would go with a bullshit camera like either of these is just because of the natural look. It takes us back to a time where things were normal. And like all your digital modern mirrorless is something about it was just, just like, ugh, it's so sharp and just edgy and digital and unreal. And like wh what happened to walking in a forest and just like being in nature and breathing fresh air. Whereas like the modern camera, it's like you're eating Skittles, your diet is all Skittles and Mountain Dew. And then like you're, you're in a weird uniform, and nothing's right. Whereas this takes us back to a time, a simpler time, a better time. Where it's just like, oh, that's how the real world is. It's like the matrix, the real world here, not the fake one with the red dress lady that you'll never get. Even if you programmed her, it's like, no, she'll still reject you. Okay, let's go outside for a little nature test. I think I will do the Zeiss 85mm 1.4 speed boosted to the Black Magic and probably the 135 Tony 2 on you for a somewhat equivalent focal length. And the battle continues. And then we will debate a purchase that relies on the result of this video. boy we've done it do you have any idea how hard that was to expose and manually focus out here hopefully everything went right we're framed somewhat equally i decided to go with the canon ef 85 mil it's similar it's closer than the 135 would have been with all the crop factors in case you're curious can you tell which is which huh i might have switched them in fact i did switch them Boom, Black Magic. So the Black Magic OG has the Nikon Speed Booster, which brings it to a 1.75 times crop factor. And we have the Zeiss 85mm 1.4 Nikon F mount lens. So right now you're seeing a 149mm Tony at 2.45. And on the Canon, 85mm 1.2, but with its APS-C crop, is a 127.5 mil Tony 1.8. Dare we dream that? There's wiggle room, I could walk around. You don't know that I couldn't. Actually, I don't know that I could be clipping the top. Damn my tall hair. They're both heavy and awkward as hell. The Canon's heavy at 2461 grams. And although the Black Magic with its cage and the small rig is lighter at 1940 grams, but the the shape of it, it's like an L, but then the lens is a freaking perpendicular nightmare. And then on top, you have the battery for like this three-way sex tramp tactic that ruins your bag packaging. That fits. If you're only listening to this video, you might've got the wrong message on that one. What's that plane? But are you seeing one has a little more pop or less pop? What I've noticed is the Black Magic, it doesn't seem to have as much pop, even though I use a poppy lens. I prefer just shooting with the Nikon Z6 III with all those lenses. So what I'm debating, let me just throw this out there. Get the Canon Speed Booster instead of this Nikon one, and then I can share lenses between the Canon C100 and the Black Magic. Is there even a reason to keep the Black Magic? I will tell you, 
which one I will keep, or which one, if I could only have one, which one that would be. But I had a chance to review the footage in the living room studio, some might call it. Uh, the Canon had a bit of a warmer look to it when it was in focus, which was hardly ever, but you can't make that mistake and think like, okay, I'm gonna have a shallow depth of field and it's dual pixel autofocus. You have to leave enough depth of field for your entire head and then maybe Canon will focus on you. It might pick something behind you in that tiny box, but whatever. If you manually focus, it's got all the tools for you. Although the horizon looks a little tilted, I suck at this. And that studio scene I shot with both cameras, it was the same exact length but the Blackmagic file was 46 gigabytes and the Canon was 2.2 gigabytes. So like that's what the 12-bit RAW will get you, like way more information, but way more nightmares as well. They're both easy to edit, but like, I don't know, does it matter 8-bit? 8-bit versus 12-bit, now we're seeing it. I could be clipping, I don't know, I, I tried not to. And let's not pretend that that Canon built-in ND is a lifesaver. I still needed an ND out there. It does nothing. It doesn't do enough. You want to shoot wide open on like a 1.4, 1.2, you're maxed up to six stops and then, oh, I also need this, but whatever, we're doing it. Now, if I'm being honest with you, this Black Magic, the only reason I keep it is because it's funny. It's funny that it still destroys your camera and it's only two megapixels and 1080p only and it's like $500 Canadian if you can find it. It's the cheapest thing but it's funny to have that it was built so long ago and now the C100, same time frame. And the funny thing is originally I was debating between these two cameras and I chose the Black Magic because I thought, you know what, even though it's a tiny sensor that's going to have more dynamic range, it's going to be more cinema-like. Raw? Come on, black magic color science? You're kidding yourself. Then you get a speed booster and you're good to go. So I thought, Canon, I don't know, man. Like I tried the Canon at Marcus Pick's house and I didn't look right. There was something off. If Marcus had any idea about what lights are, he clearly doesn't know what he's talking about. He, he has a bunch of lights, but they're all the wrong ones and he has no experience in the field. So I blame that to why that image didn't look quite right. It's because his knowledge of lighting lacked so much and I was just assuming that he had good lights but he definitely doesn't and it's his fault. And now we're seeing the real magic of what a Canon C100 Mark II is capable of and I think he should donate his to an orphan child, someone that works in like building incandescent light bulbs in a factory somewhere and that, that kid would put better use to your lighting knowledge than you ever did. I'll tell you that much. There's two people behind the camera right now looking. It's like they're directing me but I will continue on my show undirected and it's not distracting at all. They're like pointing out what better scene they could have made. You couldn't improve this. It's funny the C100 has like I always hear people saying that I love the ergonomics of this like there's so many buttons and yeah if you're behind the camera and you're filming something there's a lot of buttons and that's kind of nice but if you're in front of the camera all those buttons are on the side or the back it's not the greatest thing ever I've had to work around some stuff to even change my aperture there was only the handle dial that's the only way you could do it and I was like I want to remove that thing it's so heavy so I finally custom buttoned something in the back to change the Tonys, which I never will. I glued it shut already, but there is a button in case. But if I had to choose just one of these, like someone just coming to my house, sorry, you gotta give one of them up. Which one? I think it's just so obvious that I would keep the Canon just because it's, it's Canon. It's much better than Blackmagic and it's more versatile. I got my flippy screen, it can autofocus, and I find it to be quite reliable if you're just out here. Like, I totally could have done that if I set myself up in the middle, wherever that would have been. No, I can't see it. But, like, it would have totally got me. And it's better, like, it's more reliable than Canon R8. It's, like, the ultimate thing. So it's, like, dual pixel autofocus of the past was actually good in the Canon 70D, and then like somewhere it went haywire 
with more technology and AI algorithms and then it started losing your ass and it would hunt. Whereas this one, like, it's good. So it's like, you got your flippy screens, your NDs for indoors, maybe. It's a hot damn nice little thing. And then you can use Canon EF lenses that autofocus with 3D pop. You can't say that about many systems. No, you can't. Hey. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All these people. There's like a path right here. And I'm the one freak that came all the way out here and they're like, what the hell is he doing? This is important work I'm doing here. So it's funny that both of these are still actually very capable cameras, unless I messed it up totally, which that could have happened and it likely did. But like, they're both good. 1080p only, that's more than enough. If a camera company would just come out today with a two megapixel sensor with all the modern tech and the processors, can you even imagine it? Like it would still look very good. And that thing would be doing a thousand frames per second with today's technology. So come on now, hopefully someone does it, but it doesn't seem likely they're going for higher and higher megapixels and oh, 4K is like yesteryear. We're going for 6K and 8K and like 12K. Like that's the wrong road that you're, you're walking upstairs to nowhere that just falls off a cliff. Come back to 1080p land where it's safe on rocks. And then we spread here and then faster speeds of 1080 and more dynamic range of 1080. Imagine a 1080 airy camera right now with two megapixels, come on now. So who won today's battle, my friend? One of them? Nobody wins these battles, they both win. Honestly, I, I don't even want the Blackmagic camera, but I just, I feel like I have to keep it. It's just one of those cameras you can't sell. Like what's the point? And then in 20 years, I'll be like comparing it to this and whatever in the future, the A7S9, it's gonna suck compared to this with its 19K raw with an external freaking robot. No, thank you. I'll leave now. Bitcoins are up there. I know when I'm not wanted. Uh, Canon could have been tracking me but I switched into manual focus. So professional, but not at all due to his hair.